Okay. Good evening, all. It is nine o'clock on Sunday night, and we're going to get rolling. Uh, Tiny, I will not be joining us for the beginning, but he may hop in later. Uh, so I'm going to dive in to my piece. But an FYI, I literally just walked in, so I'm not totally. Um, set up with some of my charts. I'll do them on the fly. I went to a conference in Joyzy. It's the first investor conference I think I've ever been to. Uh, it was a guy named Martin Armstrong. I followed off and on for it seems like 20 years at least. So they had a conference in New Jersey. It was totally packed and sold out. And uh, Met some very interesting people. Um, I wish I could say I left with a ton of knowledge, blah, 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 but I didn't. Is that interesting nonetheless? So that's that. And then during the week, I was in Dallas for another conference, at a meeting and then conference. So I feel like I haven't been home since we spoke last. Oh, no, I spoke to you guys from Dallas last week. That's right. It's my bus. All right, so let's dive in. I think my first screen is ready. If you cannot, cannot, not, not, not see this, my screen here, let me know. Post it in the window. If you can see it, don't post anything. So make sure everything is good. All right, so it looks like we're good to go. So we begin the week. Let's see, S&P's up nothing, and the NASDAQ's up nothing. So we begin the week with um, nothing. But last week certainly was not a week without a little bit of fireworks, uh, culminating with Friday's much better than expected jobs report. I think it was two set. If my memory is right, two two hundred seventy-one thousand jobs were created way above consensus, <clears throat> gave Yellen and the Fed a green light to attack. So that's what's on the table for December, the December Fed meeting. The theme now for the next, whatever it is, four, five, six weeks, what is it? a little under six weeks, is the Fed's going to raise rates in December, probably a quarter point. Um, we had a reversal in the market on Wednesday, and then Friday, uh, market was very volatile, but reversed early losses to close, you know, top a uh, top little bit of the range. That that's all good. And so, <clears throat> let's dive in. Economically, I didn't even look, but the Fed's kind of out of the way. <clears throat> temporarily, as far as speaking goes and announcing. So this week should be quiet on that front. Um, Earnings-wise, it, it, it looks like a quiet week. My guess is there's not a lot going on this week that's important. You know, Tiny will say that certain things are red or whatever, but I think it's a, it's a pretty quiet week. So let's go in and dive. Here's a Dow, and we're going to have a lot of similarities and a couple outliers. So let's dive in. So Wednesday was the reversal day, a little reversal, not a big one. We came into the week, and I was talking about market needs a pause, needs a little pullback, 1% to 3%, nothing big. And what happened last week? On balance, the bulls won because it had a good day on Monday and Tuesday and, and mediocre days Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But the biggest thing I'm going to say is that look at the negative breath on Friday. It's, it was almost two to one negative with the major indices flat or up. That's really crummy breath, really crummy breath. So that's kind of the top of my mind that says the market's a little, still a little tired. Doesn't mean it can't go higher, but if it goes higher, it's, a pro, it's probably by a narrow basis. So here's the Dow. We're still very, very, very overbought, but early in trends, as I've always mentioned, stochastics will get overbought and stay overbought. Here's the S&P. 
looks just like the Dow. Ditto, same thing. Could it pull back to the 200-day moving average? Of course it could. That's that's got to be what two percent pullback. I, I wouldn't. Would that be in the, in the realm of normalcy? The two indices that I've asked you to focus on to play catch up were the mid caps, which traded constructively. Uh, they broke out, which I said they would above this high, and now they're digesting nicely below some moving averages, and I think they're going to resolve themselves uh, in catch up fashion to the upside on the way to all time highs. The Russell is the real story. Um, just look at Friday. When the rest of the indices struggled, the Russell was the dynamo. So it's still lagging the others, but it's, it's starting to kick it into gear right now. And I, as I said, last couple of weeks, I think we take out this high and we run right to the 200 day, maybe above it. So the Russell is behaving exactly as they thought. Uh, the NASDAQ, the Qs, has been the leader. I'm starting to, I'm starting to kind of play with the Nasdaq's outperforming, maybe ending at least temporarily, and and let another index step up and lead. Doesn't have to be, but it's certainly a possibility. Right. Uh, Europe, <clears throat> nothing great. You know, Friday's action was okay but it's clearly lagging, which you don't want to see. And emerging markets, um, the chart looks okay, right? This chart looks okay, but someone tell me what's the big headwind with emerging markets? The number one headwind with emerging markets is what? Most of you got it or are posting um, the dollar, but why? Why is the emerging? What's so what if it's a strong dollar? Yeah, the rate hike secondary. Yeah, it, Bob and and Lee, you're right. But what's the really big deal? Why do I keep harping on this? Thank you, Adeen, because they borrowed the money in dollars. So they have all this dollar-denominated debt. If the dollar rallies, what does that mean? Thank you, Tracy, because their debt service goes up. That's the, so. Is, is it every emerging market country? No, but and I got to do some homework on this because I trade this stuff and I should know better. Um, that's a big headwind. It's not going to dissipate anytime soon. So. The, the strategy would be to short EEM and to go long single countries that don't have that exposure. So we have a big problem in emerging markets, an awful lot of dollar denominated debt. So <clears throat> Houston, they have a problem. <clears throat> uh, let's pull up some countries, you guys like Russia. Um, Look at the reversal Wednesday in Russia. That's so now, you know, I, I talked about being positive on Russia since the August lows. I have a tough time now liking Russia again until we clear the old highs or until we have a sufficient decline. So right here in no man's land, you can't, I, I can't be positive on Russia. FXI, which I bought last week, I bought down early in the week on Monday. Um, <clears throat> I own it, but I can't say that I'm really enamored with it. So I got to keep an eye on that. And I also bought some EW. I bought Hong Kong, kind of similar. I bought it on Monday, and I'm not enamored with it either. So I got to keep an eye on that. And I bought a little Israel, which trade is really sloppy. It's not very liquid. I'm likely to get out into any strength because I don't like how it trades and it's really not that liquid. Okay, let's see. And Brazil, EWZ, I still like it. Nothing's changed in my mind. Had a pretty good couple of week pullback. Took off. 
And Friday was okay. So now, if, in the Brazil, I'd like to see it take out these last two highs in the next couple of weeks and kind of reach up towards 26. So that's, that's Brazil. Let me pause. Any question before I move on? Any questions? Post them in the window. And I am going to, as you guys, I'll, I'll give you a second, and I'm going to just set up. My wife, she, I'm just going to set up something here. landscape, nothing, and try to do one chart for everybody. Okay. So let's see, any questions? Uh, which country would you go along against EEM? Lee, great question. I don't have an answer. I didn't do my homework, so shame on me. <clears throat> but it would be a country that doesn't have as much dollar-denominated debt. Uh, Henry, am I a long-term bull on Brazil? I no, I wouldn't say that, Henry. I wouldn't say I'm a long. I'd say intermediate term. But frankly, um, that could change tomorrow, so I don't want to get too carried away. But it, it got pummeled, and and they got downgraded, and there's much bad news in the country. So. I, it got me interested. Johanna, how about European countries? Yeah, yeah, Johanna, Europe, Europe's going to have problems with the strong dollar. I mean, and, and you guys who have been with me for a while know that I've been a bull on the dollar since the middle of 2008. Um, I went on TV many times talking about the dollar going to par and then 120. And everybody laughs like they normally do. And then lo and behold, now the dollar's rallying and everyone's like, well, we, we, we all knew the dollar was going to rally. So um, there are there will be some unintended consequences. Most importantly, it's, it's how capital flows around the world, and it, it will end up creating some massive imbalances. So yes, a strong dollar is a problem because as they weaken the euro and the yen, where do you think capital is going to flow? It's going to flow to where it's treated best, the good old U.S. of A. So here is the <clears throat> AD line. It's done absolutely nothing wrong yet. Pulling back fine this week. The question now is, will it see an all-time high? If the AD line sees an all-time high, this bull market's going to live on and on and on. If the AD line stalls and begins to come down as the market goes higher, that's a, another warning sign. We've got a ways to go before we know the answer to that. So the AD line looks pretty good. Let's see if I can. Here's the NDX AD line. We're right near all-time highs in the NDX AD line. Very, 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 very good sign. Very good sign. Let's go while I have this up. Junk bonds did not have a good week. Junk bonds did not have a good week. <clears throat> Three days in a row we've got red candles for J and K. <coughs> Excuse me. Not so good. This, this is a little disconcerting. Here's Pimco High Yield Fund, same thing. Did not have a good last three days of the week. So I said this could be the rally right into the new year. I'm not happy that it's come under pressure. What do I make of it? I'm not sure. I'm going to let it play out a little longer. But not right but right now I'm going to I'm I'm concerned. I'm not ready to take action yet. But not great. Uh Lee Lee, you want a ratio chart of what? Scott says China, Brazil, Russia and Mexico. Oh, 
Sorry. China, Brazil, Russia, Mexico, the largest debt in dollars, but that's a raw number, not which you're right. That, that's right. Uh, Scott, you want uh, the AD line versus the S&P? I can do that. Let's see. So we have to go SPY colon AD I think that's right. There it is. There's the eight. There's the S and P divided by the AD line. I think that's what you wanted, Lee. Uh, won't interest rate increases hurt the junk and high yielders? Not necessarily, Scott. Because remember, junk bonds correlate more with stocks than they do with short-term interest rates. So that's not necessarily, that, that's more like a myth, a misnomer. Um, if the market's strong, regardless of rates, they should march higher, unless there's a concern about some kind of economic weakness or problem down the road. My sense is that junk bonds fell um, a, a little bit out of, out of yield, right, and also a little bit out of oil, which we'll get to in a minute. So, but something, something we need, absolutely need to watch. Let's see. Dimitri, I will get to gold shortly, I promise. Uh, do you ever see anyone getting off the dollar and going to something else as the reserve? Ever's a long time, RJ. Uh, yeah, but I mean, so the, the, the dollar is the world reserve currency, as I've mentioned for many, 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 many years. And that's why we can print all the money we want and run up a $19 trillion debt, and it just doesn't matter. Um, there are other world reserve currencies like the yen, the euro, and the pound, and soon, and then against, and eventually the, the Chinese currency will be a reserve currency. I mean, maybe in you know, decades, it, it won't be the dollar. It'll be something else or a combination, but I'm not going to worry about that just quite yet. All right, let's forge ahead. Now let's go to my, my four key sectors. Semis, boom. Semis can do okay in a higher interest rate environment, hence their big rally. What a nice little bear trap on Thursday. Trap the bears, then Friday, right, right back to closing of the high of the day. Semis look good. So let, let's put that on the bullish list for our four key sectors. Trannies. Trannies are basically neutral in here, although, as I've said for several months, I do think this all resolves up here. I think the trannies are going up you know, a good 10% in short order. So I do think the trannies go higher. That's two. Banks, boom, baby, on Friday. I mean, we talk, I, we've spoken about the banks all year. That For me, they were a second half of the year story. Um, and they are just really kicking into high gear because higher rates right now work in the bank's favor. Much better net interest margins. Banks are in good shape. So, uh, so now we've got the trannies, semis, and the banks all look pretty good to me. Our three key sectors and consumer discretionary. Wednesday's reversal was, was I won't exaggerate and call it severe. Um, but they're at all-time highs, and eventually they will they'll pull back and then take out Wednesday's high. So our four key sectors are all in gear to the upside. Our four key sectors are all in gear to the upside. Very tough to be bearish. I mean, could you be bearish for a quick pullback? Sure. But, I mean, week after week, the markets just rip the face off of the bears. So... I mean, what's left? I mean, I, I follow some people on Twitter, and they're like in, I don't know if they're smoking something or or snorting it or shooting it, but they keep disavowing this bull market for years. Like, I don't, I don't get it. But as long as they remain bearish, we're going higher. And I still think 20000 by August. Uh, Lee, if semis are bullish and the comp is losing steam, how do we resolve? So, Lee... Well, I didn't say the comp was losing steam. I just said it, 
um, as a leader against the other indices. So the NASDAQ composite can still go up, it just may not lead. The semis can go up, but maybe the, maybe the small caps take over leadership. That's all I was saying. They could all go up, but I'm fine with that. Bob, does printing money add to national debt? No. You mean, I, Bob, I assume you mean um, the Fed. Because when the Fed prints, uh, when the Fed buys bonds, that's not increasing the national debt. <clears throat> National debt goes up by Congress spending more than it takes in. Uh, let's see, Scott, Dow 20,000 of August, that's new. Now, I thought I said, no, Scott, now that I didn't change my mind. I thought I always said um, Dow 20,000 by August. Maybe not. I thought, if not, yeah, I just think 20, and frankly, whether it's, you know, June, July, August, September, October, I think 20,000 is coming to a market near you soon. And then once we get there, I will likely tell you we're going to go to 22 or 23,000. If the Fed raises rates in December, will that hurt the stock market? If the Fed raising rates, Tracy, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take the put off the volatility dampening pedal. So volatility is going to increase. That does not necessarily mean it's going to hurt stocks. It'll be more volatile. All right, let's forge ahead. All right, so we're four key sectors looking good. Software continues to look good. Boom, all-time highs. Boom, boom, boom. This one, any pullback for years, you just buy software. You know, Dynamo. One of my sectors of the year, um, trading okay now, but not a leader. I think it's okay, telecom, not bad. This is a really nice breakout in XLF, and that was just gorgeous. I'm kind of pissed off that we didn't, we, Tiny and I didn't grab that. Um, but that is a beautiful breakout. I wish it closed toward the top end of the range, but you don't get everything you want. So they, uh, XLF, diversified financials look good. Retailer, I still don't love. <clears throat> um, they're okay. I just don't love them. <coughs> <coughs> Home builders had a tough day on a tough end of the week. A little like retailers. They're okay. Uh, this is one of my groups of the year. I'd like to see them kick it into high gear a little bit, but um, they're going to struggle for a little bit longer. Here's industrials, which, you know, Bob Pisani on CNBC always says, you know, when the dollar goes up, industrials get hit because the multinationals and they get all this dollar exposure and blah, 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 so they can't rally. And I always say it's nonsense, it's absolute nonsense. That's why he's a reporter and I manage money because the dollar was very strong this week. And look, industrials didn't go down. In fact, they look pretty good, even though I've not been on their bandwagon. So... Anytime you hear like always and it must, um, you can usually go the opposite way, especially if it comes from a reporter. And materials have traded well. I have not been on them, but they've traded well. Can't argue with how they've, tra they've, they've traded. <clears throat> Healthcare, which I told you guys I was selling, <clears throat> and I did sell it last week. So I no longer, for full disclosure, I no longer own health care. I do think, I did sell it, I do think it's probably taken out this high up in here, but I did get out of it. And biotech, I think I told you the week before I got out of it. Um, it's in the same spot I got out of it. So, And I also think this probably takes out this high and trades back towards the 200-day moving average. Uh, let's see, gold. Gold, I came into the week flat. I bought gold on Monday in here, and then I stopped out of it a couple days later. So I took a little loss in gold this week. It looks like um, this is a capitulatory wave in the metal and in the stocks. 
So I'm looking for a bottom to form sooner than later in the metal and uh, the stocks. The defensive sectors, which I own a couple, unfortunately. XLP, which I own, traded poorly all week and really poorly on Friday. It did test the 200-day moving average, but this is certainly not bullish by any means. I own a piece of this, so I had a crummy week in that. REITs, I don't own, and they got slammed Friday. And I do own utilities, and this is a big oucher. I bought utilities nicely down here, and on Thursday, I said, you know what, this is gonna, this is breaking down. I got to get out of it. And I said, you know, eh, let me just give it till Friday morning. And that clearly was a wrong decision because I got my face ripped off in utilities. So now I'm stuck with a loser, which means into any little bounce, I will likely sell my utilities, take my loss, and move on. Uh, oh, energy, energy traded well. It's, it digest so. It had um, it broke out on Monday, which I told you I thought it would do. Uh, it pulled back. I mean, energy looks like it's going to go higher. I still like this. I own XLE, and I also own OAH, which I've owned pretty much all year. Um, so I think they're going higher. I like to get one more good rally and then get the heck out of them because I've well, XLE is a recent buy, but OAH I've owned forever and it's. And it's not been good for me. Uh, let's see, tan. Let's see, go like tan. It's doing nothing. Um, without higher oil prices, it's hard for solar stocks to rally. Not impossible, just harder. So I don't really have it. It looks fine, just not a world beater. FDN, which I do own the internet stocks, it's hard to look at because of this freaking awful tick. So an hourly chart looks a whole lot better. Let's see. Here's an hourly chart, which I do own. It's certainly very extended, but it's one of my one of the only, one of the few good plays I have done lately, unfortunately. Oops. Okay. <clears throat> Any other sectors? I, I think not. <clears throat> I need some water. Mm, let's see what kind of questions I missed. Uh, if the Dow goes to 20,000, when do you think we get a pullback? Lee, I don't know. We'll, we'll have a pullback before 20,000, but I'm not sure um, if it's anything more than, right now I, I only see, you know, 1% to 3% max. I don't see anything deeper than that. Uh, Johanna, will the insurance sector also benefit from the rate increase? It should benefit from it, right? It certainly helps them and with, with their investments especially. So here it was a beautiful, again, like the XLF, beautiful little triangle that broke out Friday and they're likely going to all-time highs. This, you could get a 5 to 10% run in this thing into the new year, in the KIE. Uh, Lee, I don't cover stocks. That's Tiny's deal. Um, he's the stock guru. Uh, RJ, if I was not in this market, when would I get in? Uh, I'd use some kind of pullback. I mean, I'm crummy at buying breakouts. I, I just don't do it well. So if I wasn't in, I would buy into a pullback, into some weakness. Uh, Tiny says no bottom in sight for gold. I, you know, Tiny and I don't always agree. As you know, Tiny plays things a lot more conservatively than I do. Um, <clears throat> not that I'm right and he's wrong, or vice versa. I, I just I, I will stick my neck out a lot more often and longer than he will. Like I did in August at the lows in the market, <clears throat> and again in, at the lows in September. So um, I do think we're in the capitulatory wave in gold where we could get a bounce. So is it? Next week, week after, and it's the next couple of weeks. Uh, if gold takes out the summer lows, no, I think I'd like to, let, let, let's go to gold. Um, <clears throat> I would 
I would fully, I forgot to ask the question, was it Dean or Scott, but I would fully expect gold to breach these lows in the next month. And that would be, that'd be one of my triggers to buy it for a trade. Um, the only thing missing from a bottom in gold, frankly, is that the commercials haven't lined up. They're not loaded long and the, and the speculators aren't loaded short yet. That's coming. This is, and you'd be hard pressed to find a more powerful sell off than this in gold. Every day is down. So, and here's silver, kind of the same thing, just bigger on a percentage basis. So, I do think we'll take out the summer lows in gold and then try to form a bottom again. Is it the bottom? I forgot, I haven't discussed it in a while, but I've said for several years that, you know, gold bottom somewhere around the um, presidential election. And then I think we go to all-time highs. And I, I'm sticking by that. All right. <clears throat> now we're morphing. Any other questions before I head on into the commodities? Okay. So we covered gold. We covered silver. The dollar, nobody could be surprised. And I pounded the table on the dollar almost every week. Intermediate and long term. Short term, sometimes I wasn't as bullish, but I love the dollar. I've loved it for seven years, and I'm going to love it until it goes to 120, which is it's it's going to. So there's a dollar, a little extended, but rally ain't over, folks. Nobody should be surprised about the dollar. I talk about it all the time. <clears throat> and the euro came under strong selling pressure, which obviously it would because it's more than half the dollar index. Um, you know, the euro probably has another 15%, 25% to go on the downside. Not tomorrow, but it's, Europe's, Euro's under pressure again. Yen, um, I got caught a little. I, I try to be a little nimble to play a quick long trade in this. I was wrong. I lost. But you know my thesis on the yen. Sell any rally, it's going to go down another 50%. Nothing has changed in that regard. I still hate the yen, hate the euro long term. Let's see what else. Uh, Canadian dollar, um, not as weak as the other ones, but still nothing right home about. The British pound, also I think it's got it. It's going to get hit with the ugly stick sooner than later. I think the the pound goes sub 140. That's another one that. Short every rally in. Okay, that's currencies. We did the you know, TLT, the bond. You know, I've been off of bonds, the treasury bonds, for months. I, I have an opinion, and I still don't. I mean, they, they got hit pretty hard last week, but I still don't have. I don't have a strong conviction of where the next move is in bonds. Um, Ten-year yield, big day on Friday. Yeah, probably wants to go test up 245-ish. Probably. Let's see what else. Dollar, yeah. Crude oil, which I said a couple of weeks ago, that if it really began to break down, I wouldn't know what to do with it, and I don't. I don't. I have no opinion in crude oil. The stocks are trading better, but this is not kind of the epitome of bullishness. It's not bear, it's just to me it's just neutral. Can't find anything to do with it. Natty gas, on the other hand, <clears throat> um, last week we spoke about this low and something this is where I said you, you give it a shot. Fell out of bed, smart money's been long for a couple of years, and it finally had this capitulatory wave. We had an intraday reversal and now we're off to the races. So I still think natty gas looks okay. Dr. Copper, <clears throat> nothing to do with copper down here. Absolutely nothing. Stand and wait. Probably takes out this low, then look for a reversal to buy in copper. Um, let's see. We'll finish up with the ags. 
Mixed picture in the ags. Wheat looks probably the best. Wheat looks okay. So wheat's one I'd rather, if I had to pick a long, I'd be long wheat. It looks like it wants to go a little higher. Corn, I don't know, looks a little on the, a little on the, looks neutral to me. Nothing really going on in corn. And beans probably look the bearish, most bearish. But even then, they don't look awful. They look in the middle of nowhere. A pair of twos if you're playing poker. Uh, sugar, so last week we came in and I said, you know, sugar oops, looks like it wants to break out, but smart money has been shorting sugar for a couple of weeks. We had a breakout, little run, huge reversal on Wednesday. <clears throat> That's the spot if you own sugar, you got to get out. You got to get out on Wednesday's candle and then you're, you're neutral. You have a divergence. What the heck? Negative divergence, and you have smart money selling, and you have reversal. Classic case of get the heck out. Cotton I still don't like. <clears throat> um, I think it's going lower. It's just, you know, they got me here. They got me once, and then I went neutral, and then I said, after this one, I don't know, and now I think we're beginning to fall again, so I'm going to go out, stick my neck out on linen, and say cotton is coming back towards the old lows. Do not like cotton. Cocoa, <clears throat> another one, big range in the middle of nowhere. Don't really have an opinion on cocoa. And finally, coffee, nothing. Kind of like Natty Gas, it's been going on for a long time. But there's nothing, no impetus to make a trade yet in coffee. Okay, let's see, what do we have? Um, why is it hard for TAN to rally with low oil price? Okay, Dean. So, if oil is $200 a barrel and you heat your home with oil, how quickly are you going to go buy a pellet stove like I did or look for solar panels really quickly? Now, a guy like me just bought a thousand gallons of oil for a buck eighty-five a gallon. I'm not going to run so quickly to solar. Although I do have a proposal to put in panels on my house, which I may do anyway. But yeah, I wouldn't run. I mean, we learned you know seven years, eight years ago that. The solar stocks are very correlated with the price of oil. The higher oil goes, the more people want to own solar. Um, when will we get the Dow 20,000? I think by August. I said that earlier when we started. And yeah, I, I, I'm gonna, I, I buy any pullback of 1 to 3%. Tiny never likes gold, Dimitri. I didn't know that. <clears throat> But, you know, again, Tiny's a trend follower, so um, you know, he wants to see gold going up and staying above his 200-day moving average. It's not like it's happened, you know, I mean, probably not since early 14, even then maybe not. So when gold gets going, he'll hop on board, that I guarantee. Uh, is it possible we consolidate for a couple of weeks or a month? Yeah, we could certainly consolidate. A month's a little long given the time of year. I mean, this is a really positive time of year seasonally. So a month-long consolidation at this time would be unusual. Uh, let's see what else. Bonds I covered. Uh, Pisani, long dollar, developed market, short commodities, emerging market, short energy. Uh, let's see, the Aussie and the Swissy. Uh, let's see if I remember this right. <clears throat> Here's the Aussie dollar. Like the rest, it's been beaten down. I can't say that I'm in love with it down here, no. I don't have a long-term opinion. And the Swiss franc. Uh, 
especially got hit hard Friday on the, on the uh, Good Jobs report. Um, I, I want to look at the commitment of traders reports before I offer a lot more commentary, but most of these currencies look like they're in trouble, at least in the short term. We're going to have a, a currency crisis. In my mind, it's the question of when, not if. That's our next market crisis. It'll be currency-based. Uh, let's see what else. Hack, Jets, and VIX. Hack I used to like. Hack was a Charles Payne. I'm going to be on, by the way, so th Thursday, if you guys are around and bored, I will, Yahoo has a live show Thursday at noon, which I will be on. And then I'll also be on Fox Business, the Charles Payne show at 6. So two media for this week, unless they get canceled. Here's Hack, and it is really, really lagging. It can barely rally. Um, maybe as a laggard play, but just trading really poorly. I mean, on, on, on Probably on Fire Eyes, big miss. Yeah, that hurt Hack a lot. Uh, hack the airlines. <clears throat> to me, airlines look good. Um, I like the transports. I think the airlines. I think this. You know, the jets is they're going much higher. So I wouldn't be surprised if they had a 10, 20 percent run in them. And the VIX. I'm gonna have no opinion. And I have no opinion on the VIX. None. Not a zilch. <laughs> What do you think will happen when the Fed raises rates? We get some volatility, but again, I said this last week. Don't um, don't get don't get don't get your mind in a scenario. Let's watch how the market trades into the Fed meeting. My sense is, if we rally into the Fed meeting, we'll sell off on the rate hike, and if we sell off into the Fed meeting, we'll rally on the rate hike. Uh, John, when the so my view is, once the Fed begins to raise rates, they're going to raise rates every other meeting all of next year. So by the end of next year, I think the Fed funds rate will be about one and three eighths percent. My math is right. Any other questions, comments, concerns, quibbles? Will the brokers be in the same position as the regular banks and regional banks? You know, Tr Johanna, there's almost no brokers left. That's the problem. Um, so is it KCE? <clears throat> Here's the broker index. I mean, I had a nice day on Friday, but I would much rather look at KRE than all the rest. KRE, the regional banks. And I say that because, one, they'll do, they do real lending. So the bump up in rates helps them. But two, and more importantly, there's also some M&A possibilities here. So I, I kind of like, if I had to pick one ETF for, to play the higher rates, I'd play um, uh, KRE. Uh, what will Fed raise your rates do to gold? Uh, gold will, will sell off before the Fed meeting. I don't think that they're going to raise rates and then gold collapses. If anything, I could see gold selling off into the Fed meeting and bottoming at the, on the Fed meeting in December. Okay, any more questions? I gotta take a shower. I stink. Uh, no, May. I'm not very sure the Fed's going to raise rates. I, and I don't think they should, frankly. I think they should do nothing. <coughs> <coughs> but they've been looking all year for cover to raise rates. And uh, they got the cover by the stronger than expected jobs report. Um, why was Yellen talking about negative rates? Because she was asked a question. And she's not going to rule any. I mean, negative rates comes from that, that imbecile, Larry Summers. Um, who's been pouting ever since he wasn't made Fed chair twice. 
you're not going to see negative rates by the Fed in this country. It is politically untenable. This is not Norway or Sweden or Denmark, which are, which are, so, which are real socialist countries. We're only a partial socialist country. There's no shot that the Fed's going to lower, was going to cut rates under zero. Not happening. They, they can float all the trial balloons they want. It ain't happening. Uh, Benji, I like KRE over KBE, but it, it may not matter. Uh, isn't negative rates when inflation is high? No, those are net. See, uh, Dean, that's a that those are real interest rates. R E A L. Negative rates are exactly as they say. You put $100 in the bank, and they give you back 99.75, like they have in the um, some of the North Atlantic countries. It ain't happening here. I'm telling you that right now. You guys, <clears throat> my, my advice on the whole to you all who, who follow Tiny and me, whether you like it or not, you have to get on board my, my, my higher equity forecast. Um, we're gonna have. We should have this glorious move. I don't want you guys being in there in your you know foxholes talking about Armageddon. Um, may I think the Dow is hitting twenty thousand by August, or Scott's said maybe next year, but it doesn't. Next year, Dow's I think Dow goes twenty thousand. So, I think as a whole, you guys got to wrap your arms around stocks going much higher. Too many bears. Could I be wrong? Of course. I've been wrong a million, zillion times in my life. I feel pretty good about this one. Um, target on the S&P. I mean, just some kind of same percentage thing, another 10% from here. But that's just the next target. Once we get up that high, I'll, I'll give you a higher target. Uh, I think it's possible to get a five to 700 point pullback in the Dow. I think it's possible, Dimitri, but I don't think it's likely. Can we get a 500-point pullback? Sure, that's a two-day decline. Um, it's harder this time of year. So that's the problem. You're, you're in a seasonally really positive time. Could we go down, you know, three, 400 points over a couple days? Yes. Once you get outside that, it's much. It's more difficult this time of year. Not impossible, but more difficult. Uh, let's see. RJ, does Mr. Armstrong still feel the same about his model? He feels very, 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 very confident about his model. Yes, I will say that. All right, last call. I got a shower. I stink. <coughs> <coughs> I checked into my hotel, and um, there was this huge treadmill in part of the room, and they had weights in the room, and medicine ball, and all this stuff in the room. And I walked in, I looked at it, and I said, wow, <laughs> were they trying to give me a hint that I need to work out? So I called the front desk, and I said, hey, thanks for the gym in my room, but was that a hint or something? And they, they tried to tell me that... Um, it was, a, it was a, it's a really limited, highly upgraded room. It was like a really trendy room everybody wanted. I said, well, I wasn't going to work out, so it didn't matter to me. I unplugged the treadmill because I couldn't send the lights going on. All right, anything else? Scott, who makes lights so long? <laughs> <coughs> Hang on. One thing about me, now I get that whenever I get a little virus, it ends with a cough that lasts like two months. And I feel totally fine, except driving home from southern Jersey, it was a 90-minute wait at the GW Bridge. 90 minutes I crawled to get on that bridge. All right, Benji, thanks. My Cowboys have to win a game without Romo. It's killing me. Absolutely killing me. All right, that's it. Uh, thanks, everybody, for showing up. Everybody have a good week, and we will see you next Sunday night.
Check your emails because we may move the time back to 8 o'clock. Check your emails because I'm getting some flack at home. So we may go back to 8 o'clock. But we'll email you. All right, everybody take care. Stay out of trouble. Don't be in a hurry to lose money. See ya.